Okay, welcome to the uh, probably the last video in this series, which is all about how to set up email servers. You'll get to find out a little bit about how email works and also how DNS is involved. So uh, first things first, we have got uh, Stephen and Teresa, and Stephen and Teresa are both going to have Gmail. So when I run this, I am going to uh, put an email server on this machine. So I've got an email server and I'm going to set up a uh, user. So the mail domain is going to be um, uh, mail. Uh, well, let's just call it, um, yeah, uh, Google dot com okay and um, this is going to be Stephen and his password is going to be password because we take security seriously at Google and then we're going to have Teresa and her password is also going to be password and if we have a look in the account list, we can see Stephen's there and Teresa is there. Very simple and straightforward and nothing in the log panel. So let's start our mail server. And it says that our POP3 and SMTP server are activated. POP3 is for sending email, uh, sorry, uh, is for receiving email rather, and SMTP is for sending email. So we've got the two protocols running and we can now come over to our notebooks. Now we are of course going to need an email program on here like this and we're going to need an email program on Teresa's laptop as well. So email program. Okay so I'm just going to get them up side by side so we can configure them both at the same time. So on Teresa's, I'm going to configure her account. People that have been using computers a while, this will seem quite familiar. So um, the name of the account is going to be uh, Teresa. And she is going to be Teresa at google.com. And her POP3 server is going to be gmail.google.com. Dot com and normal port and SMP, SMTP server gmail.google.com and the user is Teresa and the password is going to be password. I'm going to set up exactly the same details over here apart from obviously it's going to be for Stephen and Stephen at google.com and that's going to be gmail.google.com and gmail.google.com and the user Teresa oh sorry Stephen and the password is password so I'm going to save that and save that and then hopefully I should be able to Retrieve emails. We should see. Still got the speed set down low from before, but we should see that actually it starts to communicate with the uh, DNS server over here, and eventually it figures out the web server, and it retrieves those emails back and forth just as per usual. Now, obviously this might take a little while, so I am going to speed it up to full speed. There we are. And then I'm going to put um, uh, Stevens there. I'm going to put Teresa's here. And I'm also going to put up the server. So the server is here. And you can see 
that here, Teresa's logged in and she's uh, sent some commands which have forced a uh, the email server to essentially um, see whether uh, there's anything in it. And if I get Stephen's email, you'll see exactly the same thing happens for Stephen. Now, I'm going to send an email. So I'm going to click on a new email and this is going to be to Stephen at google.com uh, is the email working yet this is a test if you go into tech you'll probably end up sending many emails like this in your life so uh, there we are first one and we can see there's a little conversation here this is uh, the SMTP code and we're uh, saying to the server hello um, I'm Teresa I want you to send an email to Stephen here comes the data uh, it's from me to Stephen this is the su subject this is the test and it says mail queued for delivery so if I go to my account list now you can see there's an email under Stephen at googlemail.com and you can see in the sent box over here we've sent that email and now the notebook here can download the email and you can see here's a new email from Teresa and I can reply and say yes send that and you've got uh, a, a sent email now and you'll notice that on the server if I click uh, Teresa's got an email uh, Stephen's downloaded his email from the server, so he's got no email there. And uh, over here, we don't see this yet in the inbox until we sync it, like so. And there we are. We've got email communication going. So this is how email works in a very simple kind of way. And it's all very good and well uh, when you're emailing somebody who's on the same email server as you because you upload your email to the email server and then it downloads. But what if, for example, Julie had an account at Microsoft? So here we are on Outlook.com and we are going to uh, install a uh, email server on here. And the email mail domain is going to be Outlook. Well, actually, let's do Microsoft.com. That will make it slightly easier. And this is going to be uh, Julie, and her password is going to be password. You guessed it. Okay. Now we've got that, and we can start the mail server. It's waiting and we should hopefully uh, be able to install an email client on there and Julie could send email to um, if she sets up her server so let's do that here so I'm going to set up an email program there we are oh, too many clicks and I'm going to say the account is going to be uh, Julie and her email is julie at microsoft.com and the pop3 server is going to be outlook.microsoft.com and i can copy that that can be our smtp server as well and we've got julie and password is password save and if i do that hopefully yes uh, we can see on the server here that Julie's logged in and that's absolutely fine so the problem now is Julie can communicate with her mail server and Stephen and Teresa can com communicate with their mail server over here but to be able to send email outside of the organization for Julie to send email to Stephen then the Microsoft mail server has to be able 
to send some information to the Gmail server. And the Gmail server has to be able to send information to the Microsoft server. And they need to be able to understand uh, where they're going to get these things from. So what we're going to do is, first of all, if I go back into my editing mode, each of these needs a DNS server. So in this case, the DNS server is going to be 8.8.4, like so. And we are going to set up one here, 8.8. Oh, sorry, uh, 6.6.6.4 here so this mail server will query its own DNS server and we need that DNS server there to then query up to this global DNS server so then it will get the results from the other DNS server so here we go so we've got the Google results in here and uh, I'm going to set the name server for anything else to be uh, DNS add like that. And I'm going to add a host name for DNS in here. And I'm going to set that to 10.10.11.11. .10 so this means now anything that queries this server can also get results from this server. I'm gonna duplicate that setup over on this side. So the Microsoft DNS server, I'm going to add a record DNS, and that name's not special by the way. Um, so I'm going to add that in as 10.10.11.11, .11, like so. And then the name server, so uh, the domain for the domain, uh, any domain, it's going to be querying DNS. And then I'm going to add that in there. So hopefully now we can query those domains. Let's have a quick test. So from here, I'm just going to quickly install the command line client. So up at the top. And I'm just going to use ping for a connectivity test. So I'm going to say ping uh, outlook.microsoft.com. And we can see we've got connectivity. So we are all good to go. So the last thing we need to do is we need mail exchanges. So in our Google DNS, what we need to do is we need to put in a record here in the mail exchanger to say that for the domain google.com, we need to contact gmail.google.com. Add. There we are. And then under the DNS here, we need to set up a mail exchanger which says for the domain microsoft.com we need to set up a mail server domain which is going to be outlook.microsoft.com like so now hopefully and this is a real big hopefully because it usually goes wrong at this point uh, if I come to Julie's notebook and I write a new email to Stephen at uh, google.com, a mega test was this done correctly? Probably not given how badly I'm spelling correctly. Now I'm going to click on send and hopefully what we'll see 
is we'll see the mail transferred from Julie's all the way up to this router. It's going to come around here. There'll be some DNS stuff first, and it will go to this mail server. And then this mail server will contact out, and it will go around this way, and it will go into the uh, Gmail server. So without further ado, let's give this a try. Oh my goodness, I believe that might have just done worked. So if I now load up Stevens and check his mail, there we are. We have got one from Julie. So I appreciate there's a lot of steps to that. So let's break it down just one last time. So we've got notebooks from different people. They have different email servers. When one of them wants to send an email to somebody on a different server, Ignoring all the DNS stuff for a minute, it needs to communicate across the network to their mail server, and then their mail server communicates it via SMTP to the other person's mail server. When the other person logs into that mail server, they then download the email. The tricky bit was, first of all, we had to configure the DNS on the mail exchanger to basically tell the person that is uh, the server sending the mail for this domain, this is where you should actually contact for mail. And you'll be able to see this uh, if you have a domain of any kind. Uh, if you have a look at the records, you will have MX records, mail exchanger records, which basically tell it which mail servers you're using. And in fact, you can change those, for example, to Google's mail servers uh, to set up Gmail on your domain and this kind of thing. Right, uh, I'm still rather surprised that worked, but uh, I hope that has been an informative series. If you want to know anything else, then please do let me know.